Hello, you're back here with Andrew. Um, just chronicling my journey, uh, preparing for the lap band surgery, and um, this journey I'm going to be taking to lose uh, 100 pounds. So anyway, I, I wanted to uh, just give you an update. I've gone to have the psyche valve done. That was uh, pretty interesting. There was like 169 questions. And then I spoke with the, uh, uh, the psychologist for a little bit and uh, gave me the results and gave me his conclusion that I was ready for the um, surgery. Uh, Wednesday I go back to my primary care doctor and uh, get my EKG done, my chest x-ray and my lab work uh, uh, done and uh, then those results will go to my surge it and then I'll have a pre-op appointment uh, after that. So things are moving along. Um, sometimes it can be frustrating with uh, insurance and different people that are taking appointments and stuff but uh, it's uh, still moving along and I'm pretty excited about that. And um, got the approval for the financing. Um, as I mentioned before, my insurance only going to cover is only going to cover five thousand, and uh, I've been financed for the other eleven thousand for a total of sixteen thousand. So, so uh, one of the things I wanted to cover in this video was just how I uh, got here with uh, being overweight, as overweight as I am. And uh, I did get back up to two hundred eighty pounds for insurance uh, BMI of forty. And um, so, like I mentioned in my other video, um, when I was a freshman in high school, I was uh, 165 pounds, and uh, I had uh, I was fairly active in high school. When I went to college, I ran probably uh, a couple times a week, about three miles each time. Uh, when I was growing up, and you know, when you grow up, you just you don't know, you know, what your childhood was like. You know, you can't really examine it uh, until later in life. And uh, you just, what it is is what it is, you know. And so now looking back at it, you know, we were fairly poor. And um, had two older brothers and um, uh, both my parents were overweight. But uh, us boys were pretty skinny. And uh, uh, my mom would go to the grocery store once a week and... Uh, you know, things the week would start out good, you know, probably go on a Saturday and Sunday we would have a um, big Sunday meal. But other than that, uh, you know, we would, you know, have a, uh, we would eat at school, breakfast and lunch, and then um, have dinner at home. But, you know, it's always a little bit of a fight, of what, you know, from us boys of, you know, who eats what and, uh, and uh, you know, being the youngest, you know, it's always... Uh, you know, usually the last, the last to get what to eat. But with that said, you know, I think that's what, you know, really just, we didn't have much. So, you know, that's what sort of kept us skinny. You know, I really think that uh, uh, I just didn't, weren't offered a lot of choices and stuff. So it was interesting. When I went to college, uh, our cafeteria was all you could eat. I never seen anything like that. I uh, worked in the cafeteria. I was able to bring food home uh, from work, and uh, I noticed, you know, that that's when I started picking up, uh, eating more, and picking up, uh, gaining some weight. But it also had uh, um, been exercising fairly well as, uh, as well. And uh, my first job out of college had some physical activity part to it, and that helped keep some of the, the weight down as well. Um, and, but I did notice that, you know, I was being introduced uh, to things I had never eaten before. Um, you know, growing up, we just, we didn't go out to eat. You know, I didn't, never gone to a Chinese uh, food restaurant until, you know, um, until even after college. And, uh, you know, it's, as weird as it sounds, you know, I hadn't had you know, lobster and seafood and all that. You know, we had some shrimp maybe growing up a little bit, but that was about it. 
So it was all new, really nice restaurants, you know, surf and turf restaurants, all you can eat buffets, things like that. That was just really brand new for me. And, you know, once you have your first job and some money, I just overdid it. I know um, just, you know, going from like nothing to plenty, you just overdo it. And just, it's all new and everything. And I wanted to do this, I wanted to document that part just by saying, you know, uh, for myself, for anyone else that's struggling with their weight, you know, just examine where you came from. I think it'll help so you don't repeat it. And that's what I'm really concerned about. I mean, I think that um, uh, the lap band is going to be a tool that's going to help me lose the weight. And I think I'm going to be able to get down to the maintenance weight. But that's where I think the work really will start for me is, uh, is maintaining that weight. And uh, so I wanted to move on a little bit uh, further in life when I was, um, uh, for me it was 1994, I was skiing, broke my knee instead of my ACL, breaking my tibia broke, and uh, I had surgery for that, I uh, had this weird uh, pain um, disorder called RSD, and I forget what the acronym stands for right now, but um, it really set me back, uh, you know, it took a while for the, for the knee to heal. Then when I went through physical therapy, that's when this RSD showed up. Had to have another surgery uh, later, and um, still the pain, tremendous amount of pain was still there, just off the charts. Where you know any drug medicine you would take for pain just didn't didn't even begin to touch it. So I never really healed quite right. I, I still don't have. Um, uh, we were sort of glad that it got straight and it allowed me to walk, but I can't bend it all the way. Um, but I was spent a lot of time laid up, um, hope, waiting for it to heal and um, being inactive, and that's when the weight really started to pile on for me. Um, the RST doesn't really stay with you for life, the way it works, it's just during a serious injury like that then, and post-surgery, then it, it's up to like a couple years. So I don't have that now. I'm actually looking forward to losing this weight. I'm actually going to have knee surgery once I lose the weight and I hope to be active after surgery, do the couch to 5k, um, officially want to do 10k races and then and then have the surgery. Um, so um, so those are some of my my goals and sort of where I've uh, come from. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, in the last video, I have uh, uh, a hip problem right now. Uh, we're looking mid-December, end of December for that to be fully healed. Uh, but it was definitely weight related. I mean, the weight uh, uh, caused the overuse uh, of my hip, the over uh, exertion of it. Uh, sorry if I didn't say that word right. But uh, anyway, uh, just you know, my knees, my ankles, just they just all hurt. And I think with uh, the weight, uh, reduction of weight, that's really going to help. I feel like a little bit, I wish I would had this done five, ten years ago. Um, I think it would have really helped. I probably wasn't at this weight now. I mean, I, uh, been, I had probably five years ago or so, I probably would have been 250, 260. And uh, we're, I hover between 280 and 294 now, 280 plus right now. So those are some of the things I wanted to uh, document for myself as well as contribute back to um, the group. Uh, I also just wanted to ask a few questions for, to the group. The doctor I'm going to for the surgery, um, he uh, does him personally does about 500 a year. Uh, there's two of the doctors. My doctor is Dr. Atkinson, uh, James Atkinson here in Las Vegas, and then his partner is Dr. Soon. And um, so to combine, they do a thousand a year. They have um, uh, PAs that work for them. Uh, they just primarily do the surgeries, the PAs do the fills, and um, they have a pretty big staff, uh, supporting staff. And um, my uh, orthopedic doctor here in Las Vegas, 
uh, had the lap band done. He's three years out post-op. He's lost over 100 pounds. Um, he lost the 100 pounds in a year. And uh, he went to Dr. Atkinson. Highly recommends him. He recommends him first because he's got so much experience in the surgery. And then um, uh, he, just, he just says, you just got to know up front that you're going to see the PA. You'll never see your doctor again. Uh, like, uh, obviously, if there's something that goes wrong, seriously wrong, down the road, then you would see your surgeon again. But uh, you're going to see the PA for Phil's. And uh, as I've watched a lot of YouTube videos, I've noticed that a lot of people have had problems making appointments with their doctor to get their fills and had to have to get those postponed or rescheduled. And I think that's one of the advantages of where I'm considering going is that um, there's enough PAs, enough people there that can do fills that, I'll, that uh, if there was ever a scheduling conflict or whatever, that I'd be able to get someone else to do it there. I uh, also thought that since they do so many, then they're going to have a lot of experience doing these fills. You know, granted it's not the doctor, you know, it's a PA, but still, um, I think there's some pluses to that. But I wanted to get your all's feedback. What do you think about uh, my doctor's experience? I, I believe he's been doing this 10 years now. Uh, I know that the volume's probably been within the last three to four years. Um, but uh, has a lot of experience in these surgeries. I think that's going to be a plus. But what do you think about um, a PA doing the fills instead of the doctor? What do you think about um, the plus or minus of being able to get the schedule any time to be able to do a fill because there's multiple people that could be doing it. But it also means you probably won't get the same person every time as well. Um, they do have a great support group outside uh, since they do so many that they coordinate these uh, at their different offices so that you're meeting with people that have recently gone through the surgery and you're support, you know, meeting small groups and supporting one another and sharing and gaining advantage of uh, people that, with experience and uh, it's led by uh, people that have gone through their program and are, you know, six months, a year to uh, down the road from their post-op. So any feedback you can give me from that, I sure appreciate it. And thank you again for all uh, for the subscribers. And if you're not one, please subscribe. I appreciate all your encouragement and your kind words. Thank you very much.